Hey guys, welcome back! So this week we'll be traveling back to the end of the 80s and revisit this unique title that offered so many hours of fun at one of my local arcades. Let's take a look! The year is 1989, an amazing time for arcade coin-op games with so many groundbreaking titles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Final Fight, Kadash, Pang, also known as Buster Brothers, Strider, Dynasty Wars, Puznik, Shadow Dancer and so many others. And in between all those big names emerged Toki from this obscure video game developer Ted Corporation that till then had only in their resume the astonishing Cabal released the year before. Ted Corporation was a Japanese video game producer founded in 1988 by former employees of Data East that was around for just 5 years till February of 1993. During that time and besides those two titles was also responsible for four more games. As you might know, Tokyo was being remastered for the current new-gen systems and had a release date scheduled for 2012. Meanwhile, something went wrong during the development process and just found that their website is offline, their YouTube channel is completely empty, their Facebook page has one last post that dates back from a year ago and the game disappeared from Steam. That was really sad to know. I was really looking forward for this gorgeous looking remake. So the only option we have is to look back at the original game and its ports to home consoles and computers. As said, the arcade original was released in 1989 but only and silently appeared in my alley around 1991. That was when I laid my eyes on it for the first time. I recall that the tune from Toki's first level and its peculiar sound effects was what grabbed my attention. By then I was already a proud owner of an Amiga 500 and that was when I started paying extra attention to the ads for the home versions of Toki that already started to appear in British magazines. And what do you know, it was being converted by Ocean Software but not by those well-known British and Scottish ocean programmers and artists. This time around the task was assigned to Ocean France and to programmers Michel Janicki and Jean-Charles Merignac, musician Pierre-Éric Loriot and artists Philippe Dessoli and his brother Lionel that gave life to Toki on the Amiga and Atari ST versions. Philip was even involved in the 2D animations for the recently cancelled remake and is credited for being the creator of the 1994 video game character Mr. Nuts. Despite being also advertised, the CPC and ZX Spectrum versions were never released. This last one would have a 128K exclusive release and was even previewed in issue 90 of Crash Magazine. So, after I tried Toki at the arcades, I was really looking forward to get that one for my Amiga. When that finally happened, Shadow Dancer was history. Xcopy was a very good friend of mine back in early 90s, when me and a few friends would gather and make a kind of demo party every summer since the ZX Spectrum days. Lots of games were copied and traded and that's how I got my hands on Toki in that summer of 1991. By that time side-scrolling platformers were seen all over the place and in all home systems available by then, but somehow Toki had the power to innovate and impress with its amazing and colorful world and superb parallax backgrounds that was masterfully transported to 16-bit machines. The NES and the Commodore 64 were the only 8-bit systems awarded with such an honorable character, but both versions failed to impress cause, you know, by 1991, 8-bit systems were a thing from the past. 
The NES port featured a health bar so that Toki wouldn't die after one hit. That version was never released here in Europe so I tried it recently using my MAME arcade cabinet and concluded that, even with a health bar, Toki on the NES simply couldn't transport the player to the gorgeous setting and ambience of the arcade original, probably due to its really tiny sprites that were what attracted me in the first place, the magnificent characters, animations and huge sprites. In the US only a few people knew about the arcade original, if you saw this cover on the shelves of your video game retailer, would you buy it? Yeah. The C64 version, on the other hand, was quite well received in Europe and here, in the old continent, players loved the arcade original. Obviously that ocean's gorgeous advert present all over the British press was the main responsible for its success, not only on the C64, but also on the Atari ST and the Amiga. ST and Amiga versions are graphically identical, but this last one really stands out complements of its superb soundtrack. Sound effects could have been a little better, but that was a pretty damn good effort to bring Toki to our homes. Toki has that typical story of a damsel in distress and a hero that must fight an evil sorcerer. The problem is that the evil sorcerer turned our Tarzan boy into an ape and literally grabbed the beautiful princess Maiho. So we'll be speeding our way through hordes of these creatures that are under the sorcerer's evil spell. In our way to save the princess, certain power-ups can be found and used by Toki, like this football helmet that protects him from being injured and special shoes that will provide the ability to jump really high. Those two special power-ups were removed from this exclusive Mega Drive Genesis enhanced version that ends up being a different game all around, with new levels and stuff from the arcade original completely misplaced in such a clever new way. I really enjoyed it! The Atari Lynx was the only handheld to receive a version of Toki and it looks like a pretty solid attempt and a perfect example of a well-made conversion from arcades without sacrificing too many of the qualities that made the original so damned enjoyable. This is one of those games that many people skipped and should be featured in, for instance, the 1001 video games you must play before you die book. The arcade original is still my favorite version of Toki, known as Juju Densetsu in Japan, and I played so much the Amiga version back in 91, even not being mentioned on my personal top 26 games for that platform. Feel free to check Pixel Things episodes about my favorite Amiga and arcade video games, there's so many classics included that you'll be drooling nostalgia down your chin. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you did, Comment, like, share and subscribe to It's a Pixel Thing! Meanwhile, click on these other examples of what I bring every week to all fans of retro gaming and related stuff! Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode!